before we continue, let us all stand for a short prayer. Are you ready to pray? Okay, let us pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we offer this day all we do, think, and say. Give light to our mind to learn lessons of all kind. Help us to be obedient, truthful, and loving to all. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, children! Okay, before we continue, let us sing first. Oh, it's math time after all. Are you ready? Okay, ready? Sing! Oh, it's math time after all. 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 Okay, very good. You can now take your seats. Is there any absent today from this class? Okay, none. Since nobody is absent today, let us give ourselves three claps. Ready? Go! One, two, three. Now, before we continue, let us remember or recall our guidelines when we are having our lessons inside our classrooms. Number one is be prepared. Number two is be positive or be happy. Number three is be productive. Number four is be respectful of your classmates and teacher. And number five is be productive or participative. Do you understand? Excellent! Before we begin our new lesson, let us recall our previous lesson about the graphical representations of frequency distributions. What is a graph? Yes, Prisame. A graph is a tool used for conveying information very quickly. That is correct. Now, what forms can be used to summarize data? JV. They are in the form of tabular, numerical, or graphical forms. Excellent. Now, what are the most common graphical methods? Heidi Shane. Line graphs. What else? Are there other answers? Time series. Line charts. What else? Histograms. Are there other answers? Frequency polygons. Pie charts. Pictograms and logarithmic graphs. Excellent. Let us have an activity. Using your illustration boards or show me boards, I want you to write the numbers 1 to 30. Is everybody finished? Okay, let us use those numbers for our lesson today. Our lesson for today is all about the measures of central tendency. Now, I want you to add the numbers 1 to 30. Is everybody finished? Okay, what is the sum? Yes, Angelito. It is 465. That is correct. Now, I want you to divide 465 by 30 since 30 is the total number. What is the quotient? Amber, the quotient is 15.5. Now, we can say that 15.5 is called the mean of the ungrouped data. Now, using that term, which is mean, and the number 15.5, what do you think is the meaning of the mean of the ungrouped data? Yes, Karlmer. Mean is an average. That is correct. Are there other answers? Yes, EJ. The mean is the sum of all numbers divided by the total number. Excellent. Now, using what we did earlier in our activity, the formula in finding the mean of the ungrouped data is this. This is the symbol for mean. And x sub 1 to x sub 10 represents all numbers added, and n represents the total number of data. Do you understand? Okay, let's have an example. What is the mean of the following numbers? 12, 15, 16, 
12, 15, 18, 18, 20, 12, and 18. I want you to use your calculators to find the mean of the ungrouped data. Now, who can tell me the mean? Yes, Jasper. The mean is 15.6. Excellent. Now, let's have another example. What is the mean of the following scores? 15, 19, 19, 18, 17, 13, 12, 10, 18, and 20. What is the mean? Yes, Natalie. The mean is 16.1. Very good. Now let's take a look at this set of numbers. What can you say about this set? Yes? The smallest number is 4. Are there other answers? Yes. The biggest number is 24. Are there other answers? Yes. Margie Rose. They are not arranged properly. That is correct. Now, using your show me boards or illustration boards, I want you to write the numbers properly from smallest to biggest. Now, who can write the proper arrangement of the numbers on the board? Yes, JM. Are the numbers arranged properly? Excellent. Now, since the numbers are arranged properly, what do you think is the middle number in the set? Yes, JB. The middle number is 9. Are there other answers? Yes? The middle number is 10. Okay, some of you are saying that the middle number is 9, and some of you are saying that it is 10. Now, remember that in a set of data, there is always a middle number. We call it the median. In finding the median, we can use this formula. This is the symbol for the median, and N represents the total number of data used in our set. The answer from this formula will not exactly tell the median. However, it will only tell the location of the median in our data. Do you understand? Okay, let us use this formula and let us solve for the median in our example. Let us use our calculators. How many numbers are used in our example? They are 11. Now, let us solve for the median. 11 plus 1 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 is not the median. The median, in our example, is in the 6th location. Now, what is the 6th number in our example? It is 10. Therefore, the median in our data is 10. Now, let us have another example. Find the median in this set. 6, 9, 12, 13, 2, 4, 9, 10, 19, 21, 29, and 12. Now, as you can see, the numbers are not yet arranged properly. So using your show me boards, I want you to arrange the numbers in ascending order. Is everybody finished? Okay, what is the total number of the data? The total number is 12. Now, using those numbers, let us identify the median in the set. Now, 12 plus 1 is 13 divided by 2. The answer is 6.5. However, there is no number or there is no 6.5 in the set. This means that the location of the median is somewhere between the 6th and the 7th number in our set. Now, what is the 6th and 7th number in our set? They are 10 and 12. Now, in order to find or identify the median, we just have to add those numbers and divide it into 2. Now, use, let us use our calculators. 10 plus 12 is 22 divided by 2. The answer is 11. Therefore, the median in our example is 11. Do you understand? 
Excellent. Let us examine this set of data. What can you say about these numbers? Yes. The lowest value is 2. What else? Yes. The highest value is 9. Are there other answers? Yes, Eliza. The number 5 appeared twice in the set. Exactly. Now, we can say that the number 5 is called the mode. The mode is the third measure of central tendency. Now, using this number 5, what do you think is the meaning of the mode? Yes, just in rain. The mode is the number that appears twice or more in the set of data. That is correct. Now, the mode is the most frequently occurring score in an group data. There is no formula in finding the mode in this set of data. We just have to look for the numbers that appear twice or more in the set. Do you understand? Very good. Let us have another example. As you can see, the numbers are not yet arranged properly. So we have to arrange the numbers in ascending order. Now, who can arrange the numbers in the board? Yes, JB. Remember that you have to arrange the numbers properly in ascending order before we identify the mean, the median, and the mode. Do you understand? Okay. Thank you, JB. Now, since the numbers are arranged properly, what do you think is the mode in the data? It is 11. Very good. Now, we can say that 11 is unimodal since there is only one mode in the data. If there are two modes or there are two numbers that occurred twice or more, we can say that they are bimodal. And if there are three modes or three numbers that occurred twice or more, they are called multimodal. Is that clear? Okay, let us have another example. Is there a mode in this set of data? None. Let us remember that in a set of data, we can also have no modes. Do you understand? Okay. Let us have a group activity. I will group you into two. This is group one and this is group two. But before we continue, let us recall our guidelines in doing a group activity inside our classrooms. What is the first step? Yes. Read the directions carefully. What is the second step? Yes. Cooperate with your classmates. What is the third step? Yes. Work silently. Exactly. Now, I will give each group an activity card and a manila paper. I want you to read the directions carefully and I want you to write the solution and the answer on the manila paper. After that, you have to choose a representative that will discuss your answers in the middle of the classroom or in the board. Do you understand? Okay, you have five minutes to finish this activity. Group one, group two. You can now start. Is everybody finished? Okay, if you are finished, clap three times. Ready, go. One, two, three. Okay, you can now go back to your seats. Now let us begin our reporting with group one. Group one, who is your, your reporter? JV. Okay, please come here in front. Now, for group 1, they have to identify the mean, the median, and the mode for this set of numbers. 12, 11, 14, 15, 18, 19, 21, 24, 11, 13, and 13. Remember that you have to arrange the numbers in ascending order. Is their answer arranged properly? Yes, that is correct. Now, what is the mean in the data? It is 17 and 9 hundredths. Very good. Now, what is the median? 15. And what is the mode? 11. And what, what do we call the number 11? It is Unimoda. Very good. Now let us give group 1 5 claps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now let us proceed with group 2. Who is your reporter? 
Stephanie. Okay, please come here in front. For group 2, they have to identify the mean, the median, and the mode for the numbers 23, 11, 24, 24, 24, 25, 21, 19, 20, and 18. Is their number arranged? Are the numbers arranged properly? Yes. Now, what is the mean in the data? It is 20 and 9 tenths. Very good. Now, what is the median? 22. And what is the mode? 24. What is 24 as a mode? It is also called unimodal. Let us give group 2 5 claps as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, based from what you did earlier, what did you do to finish the activity on time? Yes. You read the directions carefully. What else? Yes, Margie Rose. You worked silently. Are there other answers? Heidi Shane. You cooperated with each other. That is excellent. Now, it is important to help each other. In a group activity, you must cooperate with one another to get the job done. Our scientists and frontliners cooperate with each other to combat COVID-19. They have to lessen the effects of COVID-19 in our country. Now, as citizens, we must also do our part and cooperate with our government to lessen the effects of COVID-19 in our country. Do you understand? Okay, very good. Now, let us recall our lesson for today. What are the three measures of central tendency? Stephanie. Stephanie. The measures of central tendency are the mean, the median, and the mode. What is the mean of the ungrouped data? Yes, Joanne. It is the average of the numbers in the set. What is the median? Yes. It is the middle number in the set. What is the mode? Yes, Janelle. The mode is the most frequently occurring score in an ungrouped data. Very good. Now, what should we do before we identify the mean, the median, and the mode? We have to arrange the numbers. Exactly. In what order? In an ascending order. Excellent. Now, get a piece of paper or an intermediate pad and find the measures of central tendency of the following data. You have 10 minutes to finish this activity. Is everybody finished? Okay, I want you to exchange your papers with your me. Okay, let us answer the following numbers. Find the measures of central tendency for number one. What is the mean? It is 18.5. What is the median? 18.5. What is the mode? There is no mode. How, how about number 2? What is the mean? The mean is 25.55. What is the median? 15. What is the mode? 11 and 12. Let us proceed with number 3. What is the mean for number 3? 66 and 67 hundredths. What about the median? It is 77. What is the mode? 77 as well. How about number 4? What is the mean? 5. What is the median? 5. What is the mode? None. Let's proceed with number 5. What is the mean? 60 and 56 Hundreds. What is the median? 45. What is the mode? 43 and 98. Now, I want you to collect all papers and give it to me. Now, get your mathematics notebook and write your assignment for today. I want you to arrange the numbers in ascending order and find the measures of central tendency for this set of data. 23. 45, 46, 49, 97, 31, 
1, 25, 57, 29, and 19. Is everybody finished writing? Okay, pack your things and let us all stand for our closing prayer. Are you ready to pray? Okay, let us pray. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us for all the things we've done today. Watch us, Lord, on our way and take us home safely. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Goodbye, children. Hey, guys, and you just watched another episode from the Shudo Demonstration Teaching Series by Chernil. At para sa lesson plan and instructional materials ng video na ito, ilalagay ko ang lahat ng link dito sa description box. At para sa lahat ng mga videos ko, ito ko sa leopard ranking, lesson plan tutorials, and other teacher-related stuff, iiwan ko ang lahat ng link dito sa description box. And once again, this is Chernil. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys! Thank you.